Right then, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I thought this little enforced break where we've had to miss a couple of matches due to COVID restrictions represents a really good opportunity to have a look at what we've actually learned about Ralph Randnick and his Manchester United side in as short a time as it's possible to do so. In at number one then, he has got a clear idea. There's a very obvious direction, there's a very obvious style, there's a very obvious formation that Ralph wants us to be playing. There is an identity forming around Manchester United. It felt from that first game, that first 20 minutes of it, that Manchester United knew what they wanted to achieve. I felt like we weren't achieving it. I think that there was efficiencies and muscle memory to, to kind of work out and, and get through. But it felt like they knew what they were trying to achieve once they got on the ball, which is a positive thing. The execution's not been perfect, but there certainly was a directional change in terms of what we were trying to do it. We know we're looking at a 4 triple 2 We know we're looking at Gagan pressing. We know we're now maybe looking to go a slight bit more direct. Manchester United under Solskjaer very often were first port of call was to find the fullbacks. We're now trying to move the ball vertically up the pitch, not bypassing the fullbacks because they do come into it and they're still getting a, a large percentage of the ball, but it's not as large as it used to be. We're going forward quicker. In number two, resilience. Back-to-back -back clean sheets in the league uh, hadn't been done for the longest time. It seems like Manchester United had just immediately become gritty. Now, under Solskjaer, there'd been a lot of off-the-cuff, vibes FC sort of things slung around us. That was our identity and that was our way of playing. And there was a little bit of an element of truth to that. And I think Ralph recognised that you're putting a lot more pressure on the forwards, you're putting a lot more pressure on those frontline players. You, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo and Bruno Fernandes in a team, between them kind of make it 1-0 to United. They're that productive, that's what they do. That's kind of 1-0 to United with those two guys in the team. The problem is the back line increasingly has made it one all. So there's an extra bit of pressure on them to over-deliver what they really need to because you're just having a raw inability to be able to keep clean sheets at the back. Is Maguire playing better? I think it's probably too early to really say, and the opposition have, have kind of maybe suited what United were, were looking to do. Is it a sign of things to come? It's eerily similar to what we saw when Tuchel came into Chelsea, is that he made them resilient first, and then he started to try and build it to it on top of that. Back-to-back -back clean sheets is nothing to sniff at, though. And also, um, that raw grittiness is the sort of thing that you're going to need. Could United become an upset in one of the Cups? Number three, Delo has found himself in favour in a big way. He's certainly more suited to Ralph Rangnick's style of play. He's had really steady performances in the last few weeks, and it seems like he has just completely ghosted Wan-Bissaka out of the team. Now, is he able to go and kick on? My doubts with Delo were, defensively, he was a poor fullback. No one questioned his crossing ability. He was a better footballer with the ball at his feet. I think that was quite noticeable to a lot of people. But there was still always that little bit of a question mark about, well, defensively, is he up to it? wan was an elite 1v1 defender. He certainly had issues when it comes to positioning and, and crosses coming from the opposite side. People ghosting him from the back of him, blindsided because he wasn't checking his shoulder and scanning. But Delo seemed to also have some of those frailties in the mixer as well. Now, against Zaha, he had probably the hardest game you're going to get as a one-to-one -one defender. Dealt with him perfectly. So if Delo's learned a thing or two since he's been at AC Milan in Italy about that one-to-one -one defending, and there might not be a better place in the world to learn about that, he could easily find himself United's first choice. And I had completely written him off. So that's a bit of a shock. Number four, fitness issues. Early days have shown that we look like we're struggling with the increased demands. Now, that might be increased demands in training. That might mean increased demands um, on the pitch. But it does look like the lads are struggling with it. And there was always going to be an adaptation process. It's going to take eight to ten weeks of, of actual consistent training. And I don't know what's going on at the moment. I know there's a hell of a lot of players isolating. And, and with COVID, loads of first-team players, is the word, have got COVID. Uh, loads of 23s have got COVID. This isn't exactly the way that you want to instill that high level of fitness into them. And that hopefully there's not a big um, bounce back on the, the negative bounce back on the back of this as everyone recovers from having COVID. We've looked leggy late in games, particularly against Norwich. I thought we looked like we were dead on our feet. Is this an indicator of how low intensity the players have been training? 
which is at odds to what Solskjaer wanted when he came into United. He said he wanted to make us one of the fastest, most aggressive teams in Europe. I think it's fair to say he failed in doing that. Um, he definitely levelled it up from what Jose was doing. We started to change in the metrics, but likely that had started to fall off and we'd become a lot more pos uh, passive in the way we were playing. It's going to be a work in progress and it's certainly not something that you expect a quick fix over. You're looking at three months to start seeing the fruits of this. So uh, it'd be interesting to see where we go from here. We might start to really come to a peak in the quarters and semi-finals of the Champions League if we can find ourselves in there, which might be a good thing. Um, we might also not have peaked early enough uh, and find ourselves eliminated from those competitions. And number five, presence, May. He reminds me of Louis van Gaal in a big way. He's got a real charisma about him. When he talks, he demands respect. It's like every time he starts talking, I have to be like, right, let's get a pen. I'm going to write this down. Some of the shit that he comes out with is absolutely sensational. He demands players listen to him. Um, and that's perfect for a squad full of egos. He isn't afraid to make big decisions at all. I think he revels in them. He's got a real ruthlessness about the way he talks, and I think that could go a real long way with this squad. Um, he has the credentials to... When he was appointed, I was like, this is a serious football decision. It feels like the first serious football decision that this club has made in the longest time. He could real, really bring back seriousness to the way we treat football. Manchester United feel like Disney at some times. We feel like we make content and we sell merchandise. That's what it feels what we do. We sell content to the Premier League and, and to all the broadcasters abroad and we sell merchandise and we tell you all these stories about Ronaldo and about Rashford and about all these different people. But you've got to remember at the core of what this company does is football. And for the longest time, the football has been... Uh, afterthought the football has been secondary to sponsors and advertising and making the content and bringing in the money but it's a backward decision because the if the football is good people want the content if the football is good people want to sponsor you. if the football is good it brings prize money football should be at the heart of every single football club's decision period Ralph is brilliant in the media. There's a real likability about him and his press conferences are refreshingly interesting. He reveals maybe a bit more than he should. Let's see if the media team at United get their claws into him. But how about fucking tone it down being really interesting and, and, and charismatic? We're not here for that. We like boring and we like no answers. You know, we love the uh, yeah, no sort of Frank Lampard kind of answers. <laughs> Anyway, right then, before I go, I just want to give a shout out to some of our absolute legends on Patreon. We're going to try and make this a real community. We're going to try and, I want to see more discussions in the Facebook group. If you're not part of the Patreon group, this ain't for you. Sling it. Or check the link in the description and come and find out what I'm talking about. But I want to give a shout out to a couple of patrons. We've had some people that have been in here since 2017 supporting the channel. Uh, and that is Mustafa, that is Tino, that is Rob, that is Jay, that is Brian, that's David, Christopher, Carl Schubert, Matt Harvey, Dave Lewis, John McLaren, Liam, uh, Afsol, Loki, Nikolai, Amy, Notch, and tons and tons of people in here. There's, there's 840. That's some of the old G's. Listen, thank you guys for supporting the channel because you are absolute legends. We're trying to re-up re the content. We have got Pizza Club coming back next week for you guys where it's me and Ben. Hopefully, we're going to be able to do a, a few more of those as it comes out. The rundown is going to be back on the 8th of January. Uh, it's boys versus girls again. We've got a couple of new girls coming down for you. And there's going to be more and more content coming out on there. But I want to make it a bit of a community. Can we start getting more stuff going on on the reddit can we start getting more stuff going in in the facebook group let's have a bit of a discussion do you want us to keep it off topic off football or do you want some dedicated football content in there as well this is your community we want to know what you want to do with it um janine's taking charge of it now so hopefully you're going to see some really positive changes and if you want to get in the mixer for it we are talking about doing some live shows uh dublin looks like it's the first place that we're going to do um but we need to get over a thousand to do that we're at 840 at the moment if you want to join in the mixer see what it's all about it's the price of a pint um once a month and you get a bit of extra content for it loads of little extra goodies and uh, it helps support the channel nice one
Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.